Welcome back to this Let's Play of the original official campaign for Neverwinter Nights 2. Last time we uh, got enough experience to gain a level, so I'll do that. I think it is time uh, everyone march behind we me. We also Make have arrived new glorious at the ruins of Arvon and are um, getting on our way towards working towards the actual plot. Imagine that. I want to make sure I give somebody the sleight of hand skill. They don't need to be good at it, just somebody. And since Ziggy is fairly useless for pretty much everything anyways, uh, I may as well give it to her. I'm also going to give her the scribe scroll feat, so that I can move all of the spells over to my main cleric spells that are also wizard spells over to my main character. Listening, and sort of really? work on my little challenge. Yes. Uh, Chandra is fairly straightforward as a fighter. Um, I'm just going to have her... Just put some points into random stuff here. And we'll heal. And, uh, give her... Well, I'll give her Blind Fight. I don't know if she'll actually need it, but... I'll give it to her anyways. It's more useful than Power Critical. I think it is time everyone march yes, behind uh, me. Your is new also glorious not particularly leader. a particularly thrilling character as far as what I need to do with him, but, uh... May as well give him his level. And... For him, Great Cleave is not something I take, uh, essentially, after the very beginning of the game. Um, I'll give him just toughness. Toughness just gives you extra hit points, but, well... Listening, really. He yeah. uses this Shield Other spell, which allows him to take damage for other party members, so I'd rather I have him time survive when he does that. Uh, glorious not that he leader. seems to take all that much damage when he does, but, uh, you know. It's the principle of the thing. And I'll just give Sand with a point. Now, Sand is going to get uh, craft wondrous items, and he get, that's his wizard bonus feat. He also gets just a standard feat at this level, and I'm also going to give him craft magic arms and armor. I gave Grobnar craft magic arms and armor, but Grobnar can't actually cast all of the uh, related spells for that. Uh, if you cast things from scrolls, they are considered to be if level 10, and there are some spells where you need more than level 10, essentially, to have them work. So, there's some new spells, Follow me. and Keep up. I'm going to sort of scribe some scrolls and be right back. I'll actually show my own level, just so I can show some of this progress. Um, I've been doing most of these off-screen since they're in the, the video description, but, you know, uh, I'm actually deviating from the plan I had a little bit. I'm actually putting more points into Intimidate than I expected. Um, I probably should have taken the Able Learner feat, but I didn't, so I'm going to have to deal with it. Persistent spell? Hmm, maybe redundant to have me have it, uh, but uh, there aren't really that many feats that I sort of must have for this build. Um, well, there are a couple, but I have them all. I'll pick up Solipsism and Prismatic Spray. Solipsism, I, I mentioned earlier, has no uh, scrolls, so I'm going to have to get it this way. But just going back through my list of things I know and have yet to learn, Ethereal Visage is also a bard spell that uh, Grobnar already knows, so he just needs the scribe scroll feed to be actually put it on paper. Stone to Flesh, I, there's an item which casts that, and I can't remember where you find it, but worst case scenario, I, I can have like Quara switch in the spell to get that. It's really useless, but it's there. Kakaphonic Burst, again, is Grobnar knows. These are more spells Grobnar knows. And levels 0 through 3, I'm done with. So, I've been accumulating scrolls for level 7, so it will not take me very long to, compared to at least previous levels, complete my collection of spells for that level. So I'll do that, and I need to rest up since I've learned a whole bunch of new spells, and uh, I'll be right back. Alright. Now that we've cleared the surface area, gained our levels, uh, let's get to why we're actually here, which is these statues. This is the first one. In ancient times, the Guardian was created to protect Ilfarn. If the time has come to dismantle our great instrument, you will be an agent of its destruction. Take this blessing of camaraderie. May its power strike down all who oppose you and your allies. Each of these statues gives you a special ability. 
The first part of the ritual is complete. Our enemy's home is everywhere darkness lies. This particular one, um... Know that though the King of Shadows may become legions, this ritual may still be used to drive him back. This particular one essentially gives a uh, bonus to all of your companion's weapons. It lasts five rounds and you can use it once a day. Um, at this point it's plus three to attack and plus three to damage to your entire party, which is fairly potent, not, you know, superpower, but certainly not bad. Uh, I have to do some diplomacy here, so I'm gonna cast Eagle Splendor the sixth level way, just for some variety. Um, and this guy is essentially one of the kin of one of the orcs we killed at Old Outwell. And you can sort of intimidate him into shutting up. And in doing so, you get some influence with sand. You can also do that with diplomacy if you want. And this guy has a job for you to uh, kill his rival, who is a bugbear. Or sorry, not a bugbear. A, uh, an ogre mage who's over here at Riverguard Keep. Sounds easy enough. Just create undead. Just to, there's one more fight in front of the keep, so we may as well have a little fun with it. There's a mummy. Uh, he does not, in fact, run back to his mummy if you uh, slap him around. He's fairly... I mean, the, the create undead are like the level 4 undead. Uh, they last quite a while. Um, yes. Between the undead and... The planar bindings, the undead are more powerful. I don't know if they're more useful, but they are definitely more powerful. Alright, we got another squad here. Um, they're injured, but there are no orcs around here, so I don't know why they're injured. Can I cast a mass hole person for the fun of it? Mass hole person is very really good level settings. It's not really all that good. Um, in the grand scheme of things. And the, the direct competition it has is with uh, Hiss of Sleep. And Hiss of Sleep does not allow them a saving throw every round to try and have it uh, wear or fall off or not. And also, uh, Hiss of Sleep works on non-humans. So, I, uh, six or one, half dozen of the other. More like four or one, half dozen of the other. It's not a very useful spell. Yeah, I can you know, do it. I can use it once just for the fun of it. I'll clean up and then head inside. This area can actually be kind of, well, interesting because the enemies here use a lot of high-level spells and they use them, I don't know, intelligent, yeah, but they actually sure. use things like Bigby's Forceful Hand. So I'm going to be using things like Lesser Spell Mantle to try and yeah, protect my sure. main character, who's kind of my point man, from that. Um, I'm also going to throw up Night Shield which, uh, again, gives a bonus to saves. I cast Superior Resistance. So now my saving throws are all plus 20 or higher, and uh, that's fairly effective. Um, I'm also going to cast Displacement on myself. I can't remember when I cast this spell. I have it listed as uh, having cast it, but I don't remember doing it. Um, displacement is a just a level 3, and it... Uh, gives you 50% concealment, which gives you essentially a 50% chance for enemies to outright miss when they hit you. And while we're on the, the business of just casting spells for the sake of casting them, Elemental Shield's another kind of wacky spell that I uh, probably uh, should have used earlier, but didn't. Um, it has two effects. It has ice and fire damage done to you, which is, you know, not useless. And it also has uh, a shielding effect for if you hit the... Oops. He tried to use Elder Spear on me. Okay, my uh, spell absorption's already down, so I'm gonna have to switch up to the higher spell level. Anyway, it also damages enemies that hit Now, just from the standpoint of, I shouldn't cast Displace with Dead, uh, Elemental Shield at the same time, because they kind of work cross-purposes. Uh, one is only most useful if they hit you, the other one keeps them from hitting you. Um, okay, well, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna have my party kind of keep together. This is another one of those areas where uh, your party members have a tendency to uh, kind 
kind of charge off on their own. There are a lot of enemies and there's a lot of a lot of rooms frankly, and so they don't They're very intelligent about it. Flee now while you can. And I just want to make sure that they are in fact all following me into this room here. And we'll see how this goes. It's also firebrand. I have sand memorized a whole lot of hisses sleep because it's a very effective way of dealing with enemy mages. But the most effective way of dealing with enemy mages is just killing them before they can have a chance to cast all their buffs and everything. There's a setting in the game where you can essentially change whether or not, you know, what buffs enemies will cast, sort of have cast ahead of time. Um, it, uh, I have it turned on to sort of the, the maximum, but uh, they don't really seem to have cast things like Mirror Image ahead of time. Mirror Image is a fairly long duration spell, so you would think that they would have done it. Alright. They're throwing Bigby's forceful hand at me. Fortunately, I think the uh, shield is eating most of it, so I'm going to throw it right back at them. And they dispelled a bunch of stuff, but nothing, nothing I can't do with them. This guy back here is, um, well, he's been hit by Forceful Hand. He's just, I mean, he's, he's not actually dead, but he may as well be. He won't do anything else productive during the entire fight. Alright. Well, these guys aren't hostile. Well, we'll just leave them alone for a while. Because there are more hostile guys back here. there were more hostile guys back here. And I think that clears all of the enemies sort of floating around to let me rest up and uh, go through. This sarcophagus here actually just has an inscription on it. And uh, it's actually a clue to uh, how to open this door here. And uh, we will have to figure that out later. Uh, I'm going to clean up everything and head downstairs. We'll deal with the not hostile guys later. Here we are on the second level. The second level and third level are much shorter, but they're not short enough that I'm going to be able to complete them in this episode. So you're going to have to wait to next time to find out what happens deeper within Riverguard Keep. It's actually not boring. <laughs>